supposedly the first contact had occurred previously following the cataclysm. Some stories related to this event to have happened several times during the Earth's history. Geological, pathological, and anthropological and archaeological data reveal that there is indeed so many cataclysms on this Earth, several on a global level, with climate change and mass extinction. The tales allegedly recount that after such a catastrophe, many surviving humans were reduced to the Stone Age, but that more advanced humanoids descended from a spacecraft and reestablished civilization. Are these claims true? Were these sky people aliens, and have they been aliens among us all along? Or is it just an illusion? Just an illusion. Yeah, somebody's just shining a flashlight up there. Just I mean, I, I like to take my flashlight just out. Just a prank. Sometimes it's shining up in the sky, and people are like, hey, look, there's a light. And you turn it off. And then a jet flies over and tries to shoot you down, but jokes on I mean, them. Like, yeah, I you mean, don't exist. As long as you don't tell them there's oil here, you're fine. Skepticism is warranted. Hmm. In investigating the traditions, it becomes clear that that there are a number of different types now compiled under the heading of legendary sky people. Humans, gods, and possibly aliens. In our quest to discover the truth about this planet's history, we find that the gods, in general, are not people or aliens, but planetary bodies, such as the sun, moon, earth, planets, and stars, as well as elements in nature. In this regard, TV shows like Ancient Aliens have failed to employ Occam's razor in investigating what the ancient gods truly represented, but have rushed to judgment to call them aliens. For example, the Greek sun god Apollo is most assuredly just that, a sun god, not an alien flying through the sky on his chariot spaceship. I like to disagree. I mean, he is, he is pretty amazing. I mean, he's got that chariot. I mean, he's got the, the horses that ride around in the sky. I mean, who, who wouldn't believe that? I think what we're really trying to say here is that when all the gods are up on Olympus, eating their wine, mm -hmm. and, and just having a good time, all of a sudden you get this three-eyed weirdo on a chariot coming up, calling himself Apollo. And they're like, are, are you a god? And they're like, yes, I am. And he's obviously an alien, but like they don't know what aliens are because they're old. right? But I'm pretty sure they thought he was pretty cool because he could, you know, help them with their barbecue. That's you right. know, the barbecue's not working. He's like, I got it. He uses his laser. His yeah, that's laser right. ray. He, he completely melts the barbecue, but everybody thinks it's impressive. Yeah. So he's like, the life of the party. Yeah. Aliens amongst the gods, hidden in plain sight. Apollo is a sun god and not an alien flying through the sky in his chariot spaceship. Says the thing we're reading. <laughs> In addition, it is obvious from the legends that some uh, of the spacecraft were of the probable previous earthly civilization from Venomous, and flying machines of lore. Other legends say that the chaos descended these man-made spacecraft transported a number of inhabitants to elsewhere, which is speculated to be the moon, Mars, Venus, or uh, other destinations including inside the earth or under the sea. In inspection, these legends of sky people, then it would be prudent to suggest if they were true and not mythical, most, if not all of these high flyers were humans who have developed the capacity to fly to whatever extent. There have Whoa, also allegedly okay. been found the skeletal remains of a number of bizarre humanoid and homoid races now unknown and extinct indicating unexplained phenomenon although not necessarily aliens from another planet in recent years it has been asserted that there must have been many more uh, hominid. homoid hominid hominid species that previously supposed the discoverer of homo fluorescence mm -hmm. or the hobbit for example in indonesia which thrived some 12,000 years ago much later was the supposed demise of such types of species. Obviously, none of these creatures is an alien, however. Well, not so proven what? Alien. So, like, wait a minute. They're saying that they found these these different skulls that they can't prove where they came from. They're like, yo, we have no proof that this came from Earth, but it's not alien. 
I'm That's pretty what sure saying? the DNA of the skull would be close to human. So, so, so what they're saying is, is there's been a few catastrophic events on Earth. And then they're like, okay, so humans, like, we got up to a point where we could do space travel. Then we left. And then the catastrophic event happened. And then we came back and they're like, you know what? Instead of keeping our technology, we're just going to start over again with stone sticks. Oh, I think that humanity started over. But some of the precursors hang around in the background. Hmm. I think that's what they're saying. Say, so, hey guys, you know it'd be funny. Like they're wrecking their planet and whatnot. You know it'd be funny is if we don't show them how to do renewable like resources and everything. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Let's just record it and laugh at it later. It'd be great, guys. Trust me. Just a prank, bro. That's what they're gonna tell us. <laughs> just, just a prank, man. In the past. Sightings of UFOs have been dismissed as planet Venus or swamp gas. <laughs> Many sightings are unexplainable by natural man made <laughs> phenomena, but some are not. And millions of people in the past few decades have reported seeing something that is clearly unidentifiable. Abduction by aliens has been ridiculed as hallucination, which no doubt it often is, but is it necessarily always? You know what's funny is like whenever you see somebody take a picture of an alien, they're like, oh, wait, let me go grab my camera from back in 1960 <laughs> take this picture. <laughs> let me shake my hands a bunch. Yeah, like, you want to take a video, I'm going to just, like, shake all over the screen. It's never like, oh, like, let me go grab my uh, Ultra 4K, uh, you know, camera and take yeah. a picture. The people who are most likely to have a camera are, like, actual photographers, and they even know to like, keep still and, like, adjust the lens. And... By the time they get it all set up, the UFO's gone. That's why you just get the bad photos. And nowadays, in the in the age of smartphones, you don't see that many pictures anyway. You know? The Belgium UFO wave, Mexico City, eclipse, and Phoenix lights. From 1989 to 1990 in Belgium, a large object with lights was witnessed by hundreds of individuals, including police, air force, personnel, and air traffic trollers, as in the video below. Uh, skeptics claim that the Belgian UFO flap was debunked as a supposed UFO was a... Fully citrine fake. Such, ex such explanations likely will fail to impress those who witness this proposed hoax, including a policeman, an air traffic controller, and pilots. During an eclipse in Mexico City in July 11, 1991, a UFO was witnessed and filmed by hundreds of people as they gazed up in the sky. You know, UFO just stands for unidenti Unidentified Flying Object. So, I mean, they can't really say that it was a hoax or anything like that because people didn't know what to identify it as. It was not an alien for it to be unidentified. So it was literally a UFO. <laughs> you can't say that it wasn't because people didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. And once they find out, then it's no longer a UFO. And it's just an IFO, like a plane. You yeah. ever look at a plane, it's like, guys, there's an IFO up in the sky. <laughs> it's identifiable. I think that's what I'm going to call planes from now on. IFOs. Let's see what people say. Now, let's see. Uh, a similar sight. Something similar to that in Belgium occurred in 1997, called the Phoenix Lights, which has garnered a great deal of attention and was seen by a multitude of people including air traffic personnel and major politicians. The story is so impressive that it featured in the National Geographic's Secret History of UFOs, which provides a neutral and important chronicle of the various legends and sightings over the past several decades. In this regard, the former governor of Arizona, Fife Symington, Nice name. I think I got that right. Yeah. Said that the Phoenix Lights phenomenon, which he himself witnessed, I suspect that unless the Defense Department proves it otherwise, it was some kind of alien spacecraft. That's his voice, because I don't know what he sounds like. Amazing. The former governor of Arizona said that he suspects the Phoenix Lights phenomenon. Oh, yeah, this is a recap. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's a quote. It's, it's, it's cool. uh, it should be noted that skeptics claim the Phoenix Lights perpetually two separate events have been exposed to flares and planes. Eyewitnesses respond to such a claim itself cannot be sustained, as they know what the flares look like. So that's just what I was talking about before. It's an IFO. But, oh, and these, but they do not know what the they, they, they know what the flares look like. Yep. But these did not look like flares. Oh, okay. They do not behave like flares. Uh, so moreover, witnesses likely take exception to the idea that sightings are the result of senesce flying information. 
Consciousness. So, uh, <clears throat> so Travis Walton as concerns possible alien inductions. Nigel TV, <laughs> a show that was called Chasing UFOs, in which investigators travel around the country to interview witnesses and make observations. For example, Chasing UFOs highlights the story of supported UFO abductee Travis Walton, whose bizarre tale involves several witnesses to the UFO activity and uh, precedated his alleged abduction. Although skeptics maintain doubt about it, Walton's story has stayed consistent throughout the decades of investigation and exploration, including a sensational account in a major film, Fire in the Sky, and such interviews as this by Neo Geo. Nat Geo. Nat Geo. I have communicated personally with Travis, and I'm certainly in no position to label him a liar. The experts speak. Experts in quotations. Mm-hmm. I'm doing quotations right now. Mm-hmm. Over the past few decades, several excellent researchers have followed the lead of the fringe element and produced insights into the potential reality behind the tales and the sightings. Despite being ignored by mainstream media, these credential oh, dang it. These credential is that right? Credentialed. Yep. And credible experts have managed to advise effectively that UFOs are real. Extraterrestrials are here and abductions are occurring. Among the other alien behavior, some of these experts, however, may be disinfo agents. And this field is rampant with fraud and hoaxes. So again, caution must be taken. In 2010, a respected scientist, Michio Kaku, put his considerable hat into the ring, stating definitely that some objects in the sky are about 5% of sightings, oh, about 5% of sightings, are clearly unidentified and that they behave oddly or spookily. At that time, Dr. Kaku was discussing the book by researcher Leslie Keen entitled UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record, which Kaku says is bound to set the gold standard for UFO research. He's, he's like, yeah, I'm going to put my hat in the ring. Uh, UFOs may be real. Read my book. <laughs> on sale right now on Amazon. Go ahead and pre order. Forty nine ninety nine. That's right. UFOs are real. Well the astronauts the UFOs. Among the authorities and professionals who have witnessed UFOs are NASA astronauts, including Buzz Aldrin. Wait, Buzz Lightyear, you say. <laughs> and Gordon Cooper, Donald Slayton, and Robert White, Joseph A. Walker, Eugene Cernan, and Ed White, James McDivin, James Lovell, Frank. Borman, oh, that's an unfortunate name, Neil Armstrong, Maurice Shelton, and uh, Scott Carpenter. An article in Discovery Magazine entitled Apollo Astronaut Chats About UFO Alien Belial. What did it say? Oh, it says belief. <laughs> I was going to say Belial, Belial the, the Lord, Lord of, of Lies. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Recounts Apollo 14 astronaut Dr. Edgar Mitchell was discussed openly the much-debated event at Roswell, New Mexico, and is a firm believer that the crash involved a spacecraft and aliens in Mitchell. I remember reading about this quite a few years ago, like 10 years ago, perhaps. And uh, it was talking about the uh, crash near Roswell, and it was like the, I want to say either lieutenant or the general of the army that went out there actually made a statement that it was aliens, and then, like, the next day after they published it in the newspapers, like, oh, no, it's a weather balloon. But it's like, so a lot of people were like, hmm, did they just say that? <laughs> it's like, it was like, oh, wait, maybe we shouldn't tell people that there's actually aliens. <laughs> what, what did you tell them, General? I told them it was aliens. You did what? You told them the truth? Get Have you not seen there. movies? We're supposed to keep this a sacred. So, uh... Anyways, oh, uh, my major knowledge comes from what I call the old timers, people who were at Roswell and subsequent who wanted to clear things up and tell somebody credible, even though they were under severe threats and things. This was back in Roswell days, having gone to the moon and being a local citizen out in Roswell area, some of them thought that it would be safe choice to tell their story, to which they did, even though the government put real clamps on everybody. It got out somehow. A subsequent to that, I did take my story to the Pentagon, not NASA, but the Pentagon, 
and asked for a meeting with the Intelligence Committee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I got it, and told them my story and what I know of eventually had confirmed that the Admiral I spoke with that indeed what I was saying was true. There was a UFO crash, there was an alien spacecraft, and so there's a news clipping here. RAAF captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. I think this might have been the clip that I seen, and then they kind of so the next day that it was a weather balloon. Mitchell also discussed the Phoenix Lights, saying, That wasn't our stuff, referring to human technology. <laughs> the former astronaut further said, Three humongous craft flew over Phoenix, very slowly in the middle of the night. That clearly were not. I happened to be on the phone with people out there. It's from New York, apparently. Yeah, I guess so. When that happened, and I had pictures of it, Clearly those were not, to those of us who knew aviation and spacecraft, clearly those were not local stuff. Homegrown stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey, got it. <laughs> In response to Mitchell's implications that the government is hiding these facts, it was reported. Officials from NASA, however, were quick to play the comments down. In a statement, a spokesman said, NASA does not track UFOs. NASA does not involve any sort of cover about alien life on this planet or anywhere in the universe. In regards to this, it is important as well to take into account the skeptical arguments against the reported presence of aliens and UFOs manned by intelligent beings in our solar system. As in these articles, list of UFO-related hoaxes, the Skeptical Inquirer Article 3.1... Oh, wait, this is the date? Three yeah, one. Is, it's uh, American date. So it's, I think it's uh, March 1st. Article 1978 by James Orberg entitled Astronaut UFO Sightings and any number of articles purporting to debunk the Roswell incident. Boy. So, pilot sightings. Space does not permit, for all the accounts by pilots, both military and commercial, who have witnessed the UFO phenomena for some sort. There have been over... 3,500 documents sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena by the military, civilian, and commercial airline pilots. These observations span the entire history of powered flight. Many of these cases come from declassified U.S. government reports and investigations, international reports from official sources, and direct testimony of military and commercial pilots, air traffic controllers, and radio, radio or radar Operators. I could stop having a stroke there, Goose. Don't know what it is. As they don't want me to get the information out. That's what's going on. They get that uh they gotta get the tinfoil hat on. Trying to get you by flying dyslexia to you. Well, uh let's look at Nobel Priest Prize Laureate Prime Minister Lester Pearson publicly stated UFOs are as real as airplanes that fly over your head. There you have it. They're real. White House and Rockefeller Initiative. In 1997, White House correspondent Sarah McClendon released an article about a group of government-employed scientists and technicians who stated definitively that UFOs and aliens are real and are from other worlds. This group claimed that intimidation is still rampant and people are afraid to come forward with evidence that the phenomenon is genuine. A group of government-employed scientists and technicians state definitely that UFOs and aliens are real and are from other worlds. Thanks for reiterating what I just said. Mm-hmm. McClendon stated that the Clinton administration had new briefings about the subject. Lawrence Rockefeller, well known for his comments on visitors from out of space, was the Clinton advisor on the subject. It is claimed that a number of government officials, including Al Gore, have been privy to these briefings and documents. To force the issue, McClellan reported that the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence was collecting a million signatures on a petition for congressional hearing. And then we got a segment on Star Wars cover up. What? What do you mean that? Oh. And another... We're not even there yet. Oh, okay. We're, we're talking about Philip Corso. Okay. McClendon also related the experience of Lieutenant Colonel Philip Corso. Mm-hmm. Who claimed... Respect on his name. Respect on that Lieutenant Colonel. Who claimed to have worked on the back engineering of alien ship parts of the Roswell crash. Stating definitively that this work led by the development of a number of high-tech creations of the past 50 years. 
Kosa and hundreds of others who work or have worked in secret defense and scientific agencies are willing to swear under oath that alien craft are repeatedly penetrating our airspace. Giggity. Just, just tearing our airspace apart. Giggity. Gosh dang aliens. <laughs> Star Wars cover up and another stunning statement. University of New Hampshire professor of chemical oceanography. You know, he gets Ted Loader, <laughs> PhD. Stand definitely that the government is engaged with the aliens, that there is interstellar war going on, and it's all covered up by the brainwashing of the mess. I just threw it under the bus for that one. You know, it gets all the same once you read the same article for a while. You gotta, you gotta mix it up, you gotta throw in some voices. You gotta keep it fresh, you know? That's right. Brainwashing the masses and hoaxers who build crop circles and debunk UFO sightings are actually paid off by covert agencies, says Loiter. Loiter also opines that the aliens are making themselves more known to try to take up the populace because we're polluting ourselves to death, he claims. They just want oh. our Starbucks. That's what it is. He claims that the U.S. government using Star Wars and presumably other methods have been able to shoot down UFOs. Music